So one common question I get from entrepreneurs is when do I need a CFO in my company? And to be honest, the answer is sooner than you think. So when people hear CFO, CFO stands for Chief Financial Officer, oftentimes they think of a large company and some executive that went to an Ivy League school with 20 years of experience kind of filling in that role. And although, yes, they do fill that position and that's kind of what you see in movies and things of that nature, it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to meet those standards to actually be a CFO. What a good quality CFO does is they actually help you run your company efficiently by looking at all of the financial inputs and outputs, determine what kind of trends are there, if it's a, a trend with a certain product or with a certain service, or maybe if it's a seasonality trend, we sell more in certain times of the year. And they take all of this information and they help you become more profitable. Now, the way that we do it at our company is we pretty much categorize different businesses in three different stages. So for you, you can figure out which one resonates more with you. Now in stage one, this is somebody who is just getting started with their business, right? We focus on real estate companies. So if somebody's just getting started with investing in real estate, maybe they haven't bought a house or they're just now buying a house. Now starting off in this stage, there's a ton of things that you don't know. You're brand new to the whole thing. And yeah, you might have read up a little bit, but you haven't put anything into practice. So there's a lot of areas of improvement, but you may not necessarily need somebody to hold your hand through that improvement. There's a ton of information out there. We're in the information age. We've got Google, we got ChatGPT, we have you know all of these other resources, YouTube, right? That can get you this information so you can learn and apply it yourself. And in the beginning, quite honestly, as entrepreneurs are building their company, they have to kind of experiment and find what works for them. So during this phase, you may not necessarily need a CFO, a fractional CFO or a full-time CFO. That may not be important to you. But what is important is making sure that you're tracking all of your finances accurately. And so as if you guys have watched me enough, you know that I always say bookkeeping is mandatory. Now, whether you're doing it yourself or you're hiring a third party bookkeeper, bookkeeping is mandatory. You absolutely need to have good financials with accurate data that you can report in to pay taxes. You can report to a lender to get a good loan and all of those good things. So when you start off doing it right in the beginning, it becomes much easier as you progress because nothing is worse than trying to go back years in existence to try to figure out how you really performed as a company. Now that second stage of a business owner is somebody who's really starting to fall into their groove, fall into their rhythm, right? Maybe they're doing five to 10 deals a year, right? It's, it's no longer just a hobby, it's a significant side hustle, if not a full-time venture. We're starting to see some real revenue here and you actually have some systems and processes put in place. Maybe you have a transaction coordinator or a virtual assistant, something like that really helping you kind of get through the processes of your transactions. Now in this specific situation, maybe entertaining the idea of a CFO makes sense, right? Because there's many things that are happening right now. Sometimes people may actually still have a job or maybe their spouse has a job. And so it becomes a dual income household. Well, now with all of this income, we wanna make sure that we're not overpaying in taxes. We don't wanna to have to pay more than we need to, right? We also wanna make sure that if we're not paying in taxes, what are we doing with that excess money? Is it going to smart investments inside of our company? And finally, you know, what is the overall end goal? Are we wanting this company to be huge? Do we want it to expand to, to 50 transactions a year, 100, 150 transactions or more? Well, if we do, then we need to have a great strategy plan put in place in order to get there. So again, bookkeeping absolutely applies to this category as well. You should absolutely do it in the beginning. Bookkeeping becomes important. Now, when it, in this specific scenario, in this range of activity, having the conversations with a CFO is definitely warranted. Now, some people may just say, hey, look, I just need a plan to go from 10 to 20 over the next two years. Just give me the plan. Right? What do I need to do in order to execute it? And I'll execute it myself. Well, in those situations, what we like to offer is that. It's a strategy plan. Now, during this plan, we're covering the taxes like we just mentioned. What are different strategies? What are different ways that we can save in taxes? Make sure you're addressing all of them, right? Actually going through your tax return, seeing what you're missing 
and working with your CPA to make sure that they don't miss it again. Maybe they're not aware or maybe they you know, just overlooked it or maybe you weren't aware that you needed to report that to them. And then in addition to that, we're gonna focus on that growth. What does that look like? In order for you to go from 10 to 20 transactions, do you actually just need more sales? Do you just need to be quicker in your delivery of that transaction? Maybe instead of taking three months to close, it takes you three weeks to close. Maybe that alone can get you to scale. Having that type of information as an entrepreneur in this phase is going to change the game for you. It's going to change the entire trajectory of what you actually focus on. And we all know the saying, what you focus on grows, right? It expands. And so if you're focusing on the right things with the right strategy, you could see some of that exponential growth that you're looking for. Now, the final phase of entrepreneur that we like to categorize them in is basically somebody who's got the whole machine running, right? They're knocking out several transactions. They actually have a team. Maybe it's five, 10, 15 employees. They have systems and processes in place. They've been operating at a high level for quite some time. And now maybe they're somewhere around a million in revenue, 10 million, 20 million in revenue, but they feel as if they're not really growing at the rate that they should. Now, this is normal though, by the way, because I mean, if you started off somewhere and you had $100,000 in revenue and then you grew it to $300,000 in revenue, well, that's a 200% growth rate. Okay, that's massive. Now, if we turned around and we took $1 million in revenue and we grew it to $1.2 million, it's the same $200,000 growth by dollar amount, but the latter is only 2% growth compared to the 200%. So it, it becomes exponentially harder to actually grow with more revenue. So it's normal to kind of hit lulls and kind of reach your capacity. Okay, so when you're at this stage, it's common to hear the concept of, you know, what we know can only get us so far before we need somebody else to take us the rest of the way, right? Now, obviously, these entrepreneurs who are in this phase, you guys have done amazing things. You've already built a sustainable company. Maybe you don't know how to get it past the hurdle that you're in, and that's normal. If you've never done it before, how would you know? And during those moments, now it makes sense for you to go out and find a CFO. And CFOs, guys, again, we, we always think of the, the, the big brain with 20 ex years of experience that works for Coca-Cola or these large multi-billion dollar industries. And in reality, you can get those quality types of individuals, but fractionalized, meaning part-time. Just like you have a CPA, right? And remember, CPAs focus on taxes you can go out and find a fractional CFO that can come in and help your company operate on the managerial accounting side of the house, right? Making sure that we are tracking those budgets effectively, making sure we are focused on the right things to actually grow our profits at the end of the year. And there's a lot of other reasons why a CFO or having somebody fractionalized with that amount of, of knowledge or expertise becomes really beneficial. And, and oftentimes you'll hear some companies say, hey, I keep losing money, but I don't know where it's going. Or, you know, I don't know if I can afford to hire somebody that I think I need to hire, but I'm not 100%. And all of those questions can be cleared up with somebody coming in and taking a very uh, objective look at your finances, not being influenced by the emotions that you might feel as the business owner, as the entrepreneur. Now, the next question I always get is, all right, hey, this sounds great, but why can't I just go to my CPA and have them do it? Well, don't worry. I made a video about that and you actually can check it out right here. Go ahead and watch that video and you'll know why you need a CFO.